Here's the field for the fourth race. Lusty leader number one owned by Tonia and Ted Parker. The driver is Bill Gale. Cam Terrific number two, Gino Toscani owns and drives. In post three, it's Bono's Jane Ross Batten aboard for Mac Lilly Farms and Kingfish Stables. Elimony number four with Mike Saftik driving for Charlie Jurovinsky. Ball and chain five has Doug Brown for Joe Stutzman, George Miller Sr. and Fielding Equine. Six Pacific Rocket, Tony Kerwood at the lines for Peter Heffering at Lohmeyer, John Stoddard and John Van Kirk. Fourth from Woodbine is the first elimination of the 53rd Canadian Pacing Derby, Canada's oldest harness stakes. The fourth race, first elimination of the 53rd Canadian Pacing Derby, and here they come. They're off and pacing. Lusty leader was tardy for the gate. There's Ball and Chain. Cam Terrific hooking up and Pacific Rocket joins them. Ball and Chain. Pacific Rocket going on into the first turn. Cam Terrific at the inside is third. Elamoni comes on to be in fourth. Then it's back to Bono's Jade and about ten more lengths to Lusty leader. Pacific Rocket sprinting out there. Takes the lead by two into the first turn over Ball and Chain and Cam Terrific. 24 and four. Absolutely unheard of for Pacific Rocket to establish the lead, an unprecedented first quarter in Canadian harness racing history. Pacific Rocket by two into the backstretch. Ball and Chain is second. Cam Terrific third. Elimony back there in fourth. Tightening in a bit from fifth was Bono's Jake, then Lusty Leader. Here is the halftime for Pacific Rocket on top by two on Ball and Chain and Cam Terrific third. Elimony waits from fourth in 53 and four. And they move into the last turn. Pacific Rocket looking strong and confident on the lead. Uh, following up in second has been Ball and Chain after those fast moves away. Cam Terrific settled away in third. Elimony yet to be heard from from fourth. And then it's back to Bono's Jade and Lusty Leader. On down to three quarters. Pacific Rocket has not allowed any of his five rivals to get close to him. The three quarter time is 122 and 1 and they come to the top of the stretch in the first elimination of the 53rd Canadian Pacing Derby, Pacific Rocket, Ball and Chain is going to come up alongside him now. Ball and Chain is coming by, and Elimony is under a long drive out in the middle. Ball and Chain drawing clear. Here comes Elimony closing on the outside. She's not going to make it. She will be second. Ball and Chain has won it over Elimony. Pacific Rocket hung on for third. You've just been a part of Canadian harness racing history. Canada's first sub-150 race mile in 149 and 4 to ball and chain There he is, ladies and gentlemen, the first horse to win in a time of under 1 minute and 50 seconds in more than 42 years of harness racing of the modern era here at the Ontario Jockey Club and the first all-time sub-150 mile in the nation and in Canadian harness racing history. Ball and Chain, the five-year-old son of Albatross from Full of Love, owned and trained by Joe Stutzman, co-owners George Millar Sr. and Fielding Equine of Rockwood Newmarket and Toronto. Doug Brown for the winning drive, the seventh in 25 this year. It's a new lifetime best of 149 and four, obviously as well a new track record here at Woodbine. 149 and four for Ball and Chain in the first elimination of the 53rd Canadian Pacing Derby. Very shortly, we'll be going down trackside for a live post-race interview.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, the 150 barrier has fallen for the first time in the nation. Let's go down trackside. Here is our Glenn Crowder with winning driver Doug Brown. Gentlemen. You've got Pacific Rocket, Doug Brown, going out uh, at 24 and 4, fastest quarter in Canadian harness racing history. What were your thoughts driving ball and chain? Well, that's uh, pretty much all we're looking for is hope to get a trip on his back and uh, didn't really think we had a real good shot at beating him, but I, I knew we'd give him a run and, and off the fractions, he, he, he really, come up, really come up big. Were you surprised at that quarter? Uh, no, I knew we were sailing pretty good. Uh, the inside horse uh, left pretty good. Uh, Tam Terrific and forced us to, to go to there that much, and uh, it worked out real good. All right, Doug, you got 53 and 4 at the half. Give us the thoughts now at that point. Uh, he was he felt real good. He, I, they were going lots, but he was still up on the bit pretty good. And uh, I thought then that maybe we had a shot at him, especially around the last turn. I, I saw Tony starting to shake him up a little bit, and, and he still felt real good, so I thought we had a pretty good shot at him. All right, bring us home from the three-quarter. What were your thoughts? Well, I thought he had a win off the turn. He was facing real strong, and then there wasn't anybody coming too much from behind us. And uh, when I saw the three quarters and, and he was pacing strong, I thought we'd take a shot at the 150, and uh, that's, that's what he did. He was just real strong at the end tonight. And, Doug, you've had a lot of thrills in your life, but to break the 150 barrier, is that uh, one of the best? Oh, I would have to say so. Uh, he, he, and you never think it's ever going to happen to go that kind of speed, especially here in, in Canada, the way you, know, you think 151, 152 is big miles, but, but that's just an unbelievable mile tonight. Can we say he's chomping at the bit, ready for next week's final? He kind of looked like it when he was walking away from the winner's <laughs> circle there. <laughs> yeah, I think so, just a bit. All right, Doug Brown, congratulations to Ball and Chain and Doug Brown. Now we return you to track announcer Frank Salive.